heritage enthusiasts, historians, archaeologists and more. Save our heritage. Please take time to listen to my appeal to save a Grade 2 listed former school at Easington Colliery in County Durham from imminent demolition and to my words as a whole which encourage positive change and champion both the natural and historic environment, community and well-being. Today I dream for Britain. Like so many that have gone before me and so many that will go after me, I dream for a better world. I have a dream that both heritage and communities are saved and transformed. That our homes become not just a place to commute from, but a community to invest in. That our neighbours don't just live next door, but become our friends. That our historic and natural environment are looked after and enjoyed for generations to come. That people become the ambassadors of positive change. That society shifts its focus from me to us. That well-being, community and the environment become the building blocks of our future instead of being displaced by profit, GDP and growth. My dreams go on. Like so many others, I want to instill positive change and action but feel like my voice and my dreams don't matter unheard in the noise of the modern world. Today I make a difference. However small or large this might be, I do not know. But all I know right now is that my tears won't stop falling and my heart won't stop aching for this broken world unless I go above and beyond. Today I make a stand for our historic and natural environment and I call on all those people, organisations, MPs, leaders, politicians and groups that wish to see a healed Britain. If there's anything this last year has taught us, it has shown us the need for community and the need for local, historic and green spaces to be protected and invested in for people to enjoy. Today, I ask for change. Our history and our heritage are being lost on a daily basis. Though heritage and historic places are a tangible link to our interesting historic past, they are often neglected and fall into dereliction. They are not prized highly enough when it comes to new developments and town regeneration initiatives, and it is rare that councils use their powers to enforce the repair or of, of or compulsory purchase of these places. Many of our most impressive and important memory banks are left to decay, with no mitigations in place to prevent further vandalism, decay and antisocial behaviour. These places that have such a rich history and legacy are left to become a gripe to the local neighbourhood, or a problem that must be gotten rid of. Hundreds of years of history and memory lost by a wrecking ball. But it doesn't have to be this way. As founder of Dream Heritage CIC, I know firsthand the positive impact heritage can have in a community. The legacy of these places can live on. Dream Heritage is a not-for-profit organisation which leads community heritage projects to transform and rebuild both heritage and community. Within this work, I have seen communities come together under a shared interest and be empowered and equipped to save their local heritage. People of all different ages and backgrounds get involved in saving a local historic landmark or in investigating their local history, building friendships, preserving heritage and lifting community spirit. The accomplishment and feeling of achievement from these projects are life-changing, improving people's mental and physical health as volunteers build friendships, as well as improving their own self-esteem, confidence and skills. The work placement and experience gained from involvement opens up new employment opportunities for people too. Our work is countercultural. Its aim is to not just preserve heritage, 
is to rebuild community. We as an organisation refuse to be like others that come in from above and save a historic site with lots of funding and then walk away. We are different. We apply our bottoms up, up approach involving local people on the ground, local skills, schools, community groups and businesses in the restoration of their local heritage and green spaces so that they begin to take pride in their village, town or city and have an interest and an investment to look after these special places for years to come. It is this renewed sense of pride and ownership that gives our heritage a sustainable future and a lasting legacy. So we move on to the reason of this video today. At Easington Colliery in County Durham, there is a former school building which is due to be demolished. The building is historically and architecturally significant and is Grade 2 listed. Because of the lack of action by Durham County Council, the building inevitably became a blight on the street scene and it is hardly surprising that many local residents support its demolition when the building, like so many other heritage sites across Britain, has become a target for vandals, an eyesore to the surrounding community and has negatively impacted local businesses and property prices. So where do we go from here? We at Dream CIC see a project, a united approach done in partnership between ourselves and many other heritage and environmental charities and organisations. We are calling on the help of Historic England, the Heritage Fund, the Heritage Alliance, Save Britain's Heritage, SPAB, West Dean College, the Architectural Heritage Fund, the Heritage Trust Network, the Historic Houses Foundation, the 20th Century Society, Power to Change, the Heritage Crafts Association, the Pilgrim Trust, RICS, the Architectural Journal, the EAC, the British Property Federation, Current Archaeology, Cypher, Extinction Rebellion, Net Zero Teesside, the Ancient Monument Society, Durham Cathedral, National Trust, English Heritage and local community businesses, organisations and individuals to support the saving of this most iconic piece of heritage with finance, support, donations and advice. We are calling on Durham County Council to refrain from demolishing Easington Colliery Old School and to support a community heritage project whereby the former buildings are restored and repurposed as a heritage skills training centre and traditional crafts workshop with community museum, garden and cafe and a repair shop and rentable functional function space. We want the project to be a united approach supported by not just the numerous grant giving heritage and environmental organisations mentioned, but by Durham County Council itself. We want this to be a beginning of a new age in strategic planning where restoration and repurposing of heritage is championed and no more heritage is lost from County Durham, fulfilling the county's conservation plans and vibrant towns and villages strategy. We hope that Durham County Council will recognise and take on its duty and obligations to protecting its heritage and develop with us ways in which communities can engage and be part of preserving their local heritage and green spaces for years to come. For Easington Colliery, we want the council to realise that they did not sufficiently explore the building's features but they, they still have the opportunity to pursue a different, viable, positive future for the building that would invest in the people of Durham. The positives of a heritage skills centre, traditional crafts, repair shop, community museum, cafe, gardens and function space are great and numerous. These include the reduction in area unemployment and poverty, the provision of education and training in vocational subjects, 
the creation of a facility which will train local people in the expertise and craftsmanship needed to save the heritage within the region, the provision of opportunities for people to develop their crafts, arts and hobbies, the preservation of a piece of heritage which with happy memories associated to it and of historic and national importance, the improvement of the local economy and the reduction in council money spent on benefits. The second purpose of this talk was to advocate positive changes in the planning framework that ensure that heritage and green spaces are protected, not neglected. I hope that through my words I have raised awareness that the new policies and planning framework being drafted by the government needs to champion, reuse, repair and restore over new developments. Brownfield sites and vacant and derelict buildings must be restored and repurposed by developers first before new developments are made to meet any housing demand. Restrictions on the material, type and design of new buildings, signage and alterations need to be enforced by local planning authorities to make sure they are in keeping with the architecture and the period of the town, village or city. In particular, councils need to enforce restrictions on shop signage on high streets, preventing unsightly shop fronts being built, which both destroy the facades of these buildings and look aesthetically unpleasing. Heritage must be saved at all costs, in new and exciting creative ways that are beneficial for the local community and environmentally positive. Changes to the education system must be made which support and enhance learning and life skills by providing opportunities and courses such as community work, gardening, archaeology, heritage skills and maintenance and traditional crafts as additional subjects to choose from in secondary schools, sixth forms and colleges. More vocational qualifications such as these must be on offer and recognition recognition that academic career pathways are in no way superior to more vocational careers. I hope my message inspires councils to help and support owners in looking after their historic property and in developing strategic frameworks and policies which ensure that heritage and green spaces are maintained on a regular basis and do not fall into dereliction with action taken quickly to resolve issues of decay. From funders, I ask for more small grants and funds to be available for maintenance. With few small grants for maintenance out there, small maintenance works are often neglected or avoided on heritage sites, meaning that large grants are being asked for in a couple of years time and big money is spent on work that could have been avoided by regular small money interventions on a regular basis. Finally, I call on the government to rethink its priorities, advocating for and championing the historic and natural environment, supporting community initiatives and social prescribing, and placing well-being, community and the environment at the forefront of every action, every question and every thought. The pandemic has shown us that less is more. As we realise the importance of local businesses, how priceless friends, families and neighbours truly are and how important our local green spaces and heritage have been. For our environment and country to improve, we don't need more things, nor more development, nor the HS2, nor more trade abroad, nor increased aviation. But what we do need is more thought and mitigations for community, health and the environment. And to Boris Johnson, I ask that you change your mind. As a nation, we do not want to build, build, build our way out of this, but reuse, repair, restore and rebuild. Thank you for watching this video. And I encourage you to look below in the comments section to find out a full draft of my speech and for further information of how you can get involved 
in stopping the demolition of Easington Colliery at Old School in County Durham. Thank you and I look forward to your support and your comments. Thank you. Bye.